Let's talk about books. <laughs> Hello, my name is Alyssa and I am here to give you the mindset and habit development tools you need to become a successful authorpreneur. And today, in the third installment of my Overcoming Writer's Block series, we're talking about books. I know I've said before that reading books is sort of a cliche tactic to overcoming writer's block, but sometimes we experience writer's block because we've hit a writing plateau. And in order to break that plateau, we need to take our writing to the next level. I'm a huge believer in growth mindset, meaning I believe that we always have the ability to improve, I believe that there is always room for growth. I believe that we always have the ability to take things to the next level. And sometimes in our writing life, the way we do that is through reading books. That is how I have helped improve my writing, is by reading books and learning. I like to learn. So today I thought I would share with you my favorite writing books that have personally helped me overcome writer's block and take my writing to the next level. Book number one, The Art of Styling Sentences. It is by Anne Longknife, PhD, and Katie Sullivan. And this is actually a book that I went through in my writing class, my very intense, a little emotionally scarring writing class in middle school. Only later did I find out that Stephen King actually recommends this book as well if you want to improve your writing as like one of the only grammar books. I'm off topic. This is a grammatical book and it teaches you how to use grammar to create art. You can think of words as the paint and this book teaches you all of the painting techniques that you need to make a beautiful, beautiful picture. This book has allowed me to write stylistically with grammar and it has been such a gift. I'm really glad that my eighth grade writing teacher made me go through this book because it has seriously changed my writing. I know how to use semicolons artfully because of this book. It basically teaches you different sentence structures, different grammatical sentence structures, and it has little exercises for each one. You can see some of my old examples in here. It has writing examples for each one. What I had to do in middle school, which I highly recommend if you decide to get this book, is you take this, you practice each sentence structure, just writing individual sentences for, I'd say like four or five per grammatical sentence structure. And then you want to just write paragraphs and force yourself to implement that particular structure in a paragraph. It's challenging. At least it was for me in eighth grade. I haven't actually gone back through it since. But this will change your writing and the way you use grammar drastically in such a good way. So definitely recommend this book if you want to learn more about the artful grammatical side of writing. Book number two, Writing Fight Scenes by Rain Hall. I have a very hard time writing fight scenes. And it had gotten to the point where, I mean, it's an urban fantasy novel. My current work in progress is an urban fantasy novel. So there has to be fight scenes. It's just a thing, it's gotta happen. And I really don't have any idea how to write that. I took Taekwondo for a little while. I wouldn't be able to describe a fight. So I found this book on Amazon and it is incredible. It goes into basically every aspect you could ever think of about fighting, the psychology behind it, how to fight with different sorts of weapons, how to fight on a boat versus on the land, just the emotional responses, everything you could possibly want to know about fighting is in this book and it is awesome. Highly recommend it if you struggle with writing fight scenes like I did. I'm still not perfect at fight scenes. I do struggle with them still, but this book has helped me from being stuck staring blank at a page to actually being able to get something down that people can read. So very, very useful book. Book number three, Write Your Novel in a Month by Jeff Gert. This book, um, I think it is worth it alone for the end section about editing. I believe, if I remember correctly, it's split into three parts. Yes, planning your novel, 
writing your novel fast, and then editing your novel. At the time that I read this book, I already had my novel all planned out and I had already written the first draft, but I needed drastic help with editing. So I had just flipped through this at the bookstore and I thought it could help. I read through it, it definitely helps. There's so much good advice for editing your book in this book. One of my personal favorite tips that I had no idea I was even doing in my writing was this term, and I don't remember if this is how Jeff Girk says it in the book, but it's how it said in my head, the hop and skip over, which I had done a lot. So basically it's where you kind of skip a scene or you hop over a certain event in your book but then your character relays the events of that missing scene to another character later on kind of like in a summary dialogue format and that was something that i had done a lot that i didn't realize was not a good thing to do so now i'm having to go through my work in progress and rewrite all of these scenes that happened but never got written. And if I had read this book beforehand, I wouldn't have done that. So lots of really great editing advice in this book. And I'm sure if you need help with the planning stages and the strategizing stages, it would be helpful for that as well. That is not what I used it for though. Book number four, and I'm a total freaking crazy fangirl for this book. I love it. On Writing by Stephen King. If you have not read this memoir, I don't know why you've been waiting because I know you've seen it pop up on Instagram or social media somewhere because this book is so popular. And it's popular for a reason because it's amazing. Stephen King has kind of gone through his journey. It's part memoir, part writing craft advice. So he talks about his journey to become a writer and kind of the struggles that he overcame to do that. But then he also talks about the elements of what makes a good piece of writing. And I mean, he's just got so much wisdom to share on this subject. I have no other words than that other than you need to get this book and read it if you haven't because it's so good. So, so good. And this last book has been the most life-changing book on writing that I've had to date. And it is... The Emotion Thesaurus by Angela Ackerman and Becca Puglisi. I probably butchered the pronunciation of that last name. But this book is so good. I, in writing as I am in life, have a little bit of a hard time dealing with emotions. I don't talk about them very well. I don't process them probably in the most healthy of ways. And that shows up in my characters a bit. I'm getting real vulnerable on YouTube right now. This book has helped so much with that. It basically lists, this is the second edition, so it has 130 different emotions and it breaks down each emotion into three categories. No, this one breaks it down into more categories. It's four categories. It has the physical signs of the behavior, so how that shows up in the character's body language and their facial tics and their breathing, that sort of thing. The internal sensations of each emotion, so what they're feeling on the inside, the mental responses, the types of thoughts that they'll be thinking or obsessing about, acute or long-term symptoms of the emotion, if it's been persisting throughout their life for a long time, and signs that the emotion is being suppressed, which, you know, it happens. It's been so insightful and this expanded edition, the second edition, is super great because like the first edition, it also has what each emotion may escalate to. So I have this just open to confidence right now and it has like may escalate to satisfaction, pride, smugness, or contempt. And then it, this edition, the second edition, also has what each emotion may de-escalate to as well as, and this is one of my favorite parts of this book, like power action verbs to associate with each emotion so that your writing can have depth and be colorful and expressive. And this has helped me so, so much. I cannot even, I can't, I, again, no words. Just get this book. If you haven't gotten this book, get this book. If you're only gonna get one book off of this video, get this one. Unless you're fine with writing emotions, then you probably don't need it. But if you do, then there you go. Those are my five overcoming writer's block book suggestions. If you find yourself kind of at a writing plateau and in need of some assistance or inspiration to kind of kickstart things and take your writing to the next level. If you've read any writing books that have really helped elevate your writing craft to the next level or have helped you overcome writer's block, go ahead, drop them down in the comments below. I'm always looking for new things to read and we can just share the love and overcome writer's block together. 
that's all I have for today. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to receive weekly updates on how to develop the right mindset and tools you need to become a successful authorpreneur, go ahead and subscribe and make sure you adjust the notifications and the bell so you actually see when I post new videos. Videos go up every Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching this video and until next time,